They call me Hell. They call me Stacy. They call me Hell. They call me Jane. That's not my name. My name's Matt. Welcome back to the shop. And today we're talking about move that out of the way. chains. Um, so I'm going to discuss a bit about chains before we start pulling chains apart and doing experiments and what have you. So we're talking about, you know, motorcycle chains. Pretty much the same thing applies to bikes, push bikes, not that we care about that. But, um, yeah, so what I want to do is I want to talk about uh, some guy did a video and he says this. Today we're going to be talking about chain stretch. So let's talk about uh, chain stretch, right? Now, first off, your bike, um, no matter how powerful it is, it's not going to make enough power to stretch a chain. All right, so the, the falsehood here is that chains are actually stretching and you're stretching the metal. Tensile strength of these chains are anywhere from um, 4,000 foot pounds to uh, somewhere in the area of 9,000 and probably more than that. The uh, average ones that we're running on these dirt bikes and street bikes are somewhere in the area of, um, you know, 7,000 foot pounds. So our bikes are making, you know, a powerful one. Uh, you know, drag racing bike making 130 foot pounds of torque. You know, these bikes that we're riding, these dirt bikes are making nowhere near that. There, there is going to be some uh, more torque than the bike makes if you come off of a jump, if you, you know, if you land hard, if you're hitting things and putting the chain through stress, but it's not coming anywhere near that. All right. So Which, eh, I kind of get what he means. Um, so he basically says that chains don't stretch. Chains do stretch. Um, what he's talking about is yes, generally the actual link plates, so either the internal ones, the rollers, or the outer plates, um, these don't literally stretch like a rubber band, um, but the chain, uh, you get elongation, which to me is stretching. <laughs> you know what I mean? That chain is longer than that other one. It doesn't mean that the chain is literally stretching like a rubber band, but then I don't think anyone did think that. But let's just, you know, uh, the English language. Any road. So basically what happens is, and as he states in his video, he's right in saying this, is that what happens is, is that you have uh, pins inside this chain, and then you have bushes and rollers and all the rest of it. And what happens is, is because these belt, uh, these chains are under tension, so tension is basically, you know, when you just basically pull something, uh, when you pull something tight, and basically when you have your sprocket, there's your front, there's your rear, it is from here basically round that the chain is being pulled in tension. And then that basically pulls against all the teeth on the sprocket here and pulls and applies a torque around that center we have a force applied from a center so you have a torque so the torque here is transferred to here and the ratio which it does is how many sprocket teeth you have oh it never fucking ends um <laughs> so what happens is is that he says that muck and grit and stuff is what causes chains to elongate that is not true because when you have o-rings and x-rings um the grit and shit is stopped from going inside here. Basically, everything's under load. So basically, what happens inside your chain is you have rollers and you have bushings, but well, let's just imagine pins, right? Let's just imagine pins. So you have a link here and an, in an intermediate link in between the two. So, you know, there's a link inside there, like so. And it goes on and on and on and on. So basically what happens is when you pull these links is the pin in the hole in the bushing sits there and the pin in this one sits here. So there is contact like that. As you pull this apart, these pins stay centralised inside the inner links and the outer links pull like this. Now obviously there's bugger all room in there but we're talking about load here. So this is extremely exaggerated but basically what happens is is these little eyelets in here these perfect holes they wear like this for two reasons number one is a load is being applied because you're pulling your chain tight but then the roll the chain articulates you know as it rolls around your sprocket which means because your front sprocket is a smaller 
sprocket so a tighter radius this is a tighter curve than just say out here where it's a a greater radius that most of your wear actually happens as your chains go over your front sprocket not that that's important because they all go around it and all the rest of it but you can see what happens is is that internally these bushings and all the rest of it they all elongate and that is what creates you you add all these up and that's what makes your change your chain elongate or stretch you know that's why if you get an old chain and a new chain you'll see that one's a bit longer than the other and it'll be the older chain that's the longer one um, to mitigate this, this is why they have O-rings, because they try and fill, they use vacuum and draw through grease and then basically uh, put O-rings on and then um, crimp it and all the rest of it. Uh, rivet it, not crimp it, crimp it, rivet in there. Um, they rivet it um, so that it's all locked in there. This is trying to keep, so this is why O-ring chains generally will always outperform for longevity a just a roller chain with no o-rings in it uh, x-rings basically just reduce the pressure the contact pressure so there's a bit less friction that's how it's meant to go um but this also brings up some other things so if the inside of these pins and bushes i'll get an old chain we'll split it apart we'll do a second part where i can show you these things um if all these rollers and all this have grease inside doesn't that mean there's going to be no wear? No, it just reduces the wear. Uh, the grease and all the rest of it basically just gets squished out of the way. And, you know, the chain is not suspended on grease on the inside links. It basically just pulls your chain and that's how the wear occurs. So there's no way to get around it if you're putting load on this chain. Now there is one thing he says. He says about stretch and chains and tensile strength. Stretching the metal. Tensile strength of these chains are anywhere from um, 4,000 foot-pounds to uh, somewhere in the area of 9,000. Now, when we say tensile strength, what we mean is we mean ultimate tensile strength. Um, and ultimate tensile strength is a one-trick pony. So, if we have uh, stress and strain, so that strain and that stress, the way to think about stress and strain is that strain is the load that something is put under. So you're actually, you're straining that out. You know, you're actually straining. That's the amount of force that's applied to something. The stress is how it reacts to that in a sense. In a sense, like if you're getting pissed off um, at work, you know, the strain is I've got too much workload. The stress is how I feel or how I respond to that. And these stress strain curves, if we look at steel, generally what happens is, is we go up like this, and then we have a point where it goes up like this, and then this happens, and then it snaps. So we'll go into all this at a later date. Sometimes there's a little hook there where it drops down a bit. We'll explain all of that in a different video. Uh, get rid of that, because that's actually more like it. There's a fall off there, and I'll explain what that fall off is. Um, like I say in a later video so when we talk about ultimate tensile strength we're talking up here so this is ultimate tensile strength right basically after that it's fucked <laughs> even if you do it once so if you get a chain and let's just say that I don't know it's uh, I don't know 100,000 this is ridiculous, GPA. <laughs> but let's just say it doesn't matter what that value is. If you um, pull that chain all the way to this point, it's then fucked. If you pull it a bit more, it will then fracture, it'll then snap, it'll then break. Um, this point here is what we call the yield. And this is all to do with plastic and elastic deformation and stuff like that. We'll go into that in a different video. But basically what he's talking about is he says, oh, the number of the chain is this ultimate tensile strength. You never... <laughs> and he says, oh, your bike's never going to do that. Yeah, you're right, because one thing we're not talking about here is fatigue. And fatigue is just putting things through cycles again and again and again, constantly loading it. And... Um, 
it changes for an assembly there's you know you can work it out just for a steel bar but it changes for the assembly and how much surface area there is contact blah 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 but basically um a chain needs to be within i think it's one fifth to one sixth up oh, six idiot six of its tensile strength that's the maximum amount of load you want to put on that chain so if you just go and grab a um ultimate tensile strength number and then you look at how much torque your bike can apply, how much force your bike can apply, you'll go, oh, this is fucking miles away. Yeah, but that's because, like I say, you don't want to run a chain. About a fifth is what I remember. Um, a fifth is... That's where you want to... You, do, you don't want to go anywhere above a fifth, so basically you over-design chains. You know, you um, because of fatigue, uh, the millions of cycles that it's got to go through and you, and you generally yield uh, fatigue is generally measured in is it 10 to the power 5 or 10 to the power 6 it's between there between a million uh, about a million cycles or 10 million it depends who's you know what what manufacturers do and what specifications too but basically you want to stay like I say 20% um, of your ultimate tensile strength you want to go nowhere fucking near it because you've already passed your yield so in this section here this is what we call our elastic 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 <laughs> that's our elastic region this is when like an elastic band you can pull something and then it'll just go back to its normal shape as soon as you reach this yield point anything above this is what we call plastic deformation so this is when um you bend something, I'm just trying to look if there is anything. Anything I can just, yeah, there we are. So, an elastic deformation. Got a bread and butter knife here, we all know what this is from. Um, that, there, is our plastic de elastic deformation. So we're bending it, and it's going straight back. This, we get to a point and then it'll slip. That is what we call plastic deformation. That is now fucked. It's past its yield point, and now it's done. So if you you don't want to get your chain and apply that much force to it, that all them links will actually stretch. You see, when you load up them chain, them outer links that we're talking about, they do stretch. They do bow out and stretch. Load is applied to them. Uh, even if you can't see it, load has been applied to them. And then because it's below this yield limit, the, the metal will relax back. If you went anywhere near your ultimate tensile strength number up here, you've plastically deformed it, so all my board out, they're all elongated, they're all fucked, you know. So just picking a number and just this is the problem. If you don't understand the physics behind and the metallurgy um, behind these things, then you just see a number and go, oh, it's fucking whatever PSI. Well, I'm going half that. Well, half that, you're going to fuck your chain in no time. And you're probably just floating below your yield kind of thing. Um, but yeah, you know, uh, the point the guy did make as well is if you have a non-O-ring chain, like a lot of guys who have motocross bikes, I never used to have O-ring chains. I used to just run plain roller chains. Um, what I used to, you know, knit and grit and shit, and it is very imperative that you keep washing the thing and cleaning it and keep the shit out of so the big question now is for the next video. <laughs> I hope that makes sense about um, just not picking. The reason why it's called ultimate tensile strength is basically it can do it once without breaking. If you try and do it again, it's going to fucking break it. You know, that's why we call it ultimate tensile strength. This is it. It's ultimate cosmic power. It's that's it and uh, you're done. You know, after that you've plastically deformed it. Um, if you try to go anywhere near that again, it will just fracture and yield and fucking die. We will do some experiments actually. I'm trying to organise for the far future an actual um, pull tester, proper awesome pull tester, so we can actually put stuff in and look at necking and stuff like that, do some actual examples of different materials and how they respond and stuff. Um, we will do some videos on the actual material itself, so. Uh, we'll look at some stress strain graphs of stuff like ceramics, glass, plastics, carbon fibre, uh, wood, you know, we'll do everything, steel, we'll even look at tungsten, aluminium, magnesium, stuff like that, because their stress strain graphs are completely different. Like glass, it just goes up and buff, that's it, it fractures. 
the, usually the more brittle, the, hard, the harder something is, the stiffer something is. And we'll go into stiffness, rigidity, and uh, malleability, ductility, all of that kind of stuff. Hope that makes sense, and I'll see you in a bit.